thank you very much, Mike. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here, uh, and I'm grateful to the U.S.-China Policy Foundation for inviting me and uh, all my colleagues. This is not the first time we've appeared together on the same panel, but it's always good to hear what each of us uh, is thinking. Uh, it was in April 2008 that the U.S.-China Policy Forum uh, Foundation had a similar event. Um, it was right after President Ma had uh, won the March uh, 2008 election. Um, some of us uh, participated um, at that time, and we spoke of the historic or strategic opportunity that uh, President Ma's uh, election presented uh, for Taiwan, for um, mainland China, uh, and for the United States. And um, I tend to think that that opportunity was seized um, by all three sides, but particularly uh, Beijing and Taipei. And uh, we have seen over the last five years uh, um, uh, a lot of steps taken uh, to reduce mutual fear, to uh, expand areas of cooperation, to make uh, cross-strait relations more predictable, and most important, uh, more peace peaceful. Um, I would also observe that if we think in terms of the uh, triangle that um, uh, is uh, incorporated in the title of this session, um, the three relationships that form this triangle um, have all done pretty well since 2008. Uh, for many years before 2008, uh, what happened on one side of the triangle created problems uh, on the other two sides. And this goes back, uh, some would say, for decades. Um, but I think, um, on balance, uh, what's happened in this triangle uh, since 2008 has been um, positive and uh, mutually reinforcing. So the question uh, for us going forward is, uh, what can we expect next? Um, will progress continue? Will the operation of the U.S. PRC Taiwan Triangle continue to be positive and mutually um, reinforcing? Uh, the topic that I've been asked to talk about is um, the prospect of political talks uh, between Taipei and Beijing. Um, as we know, um, the focus uh, for the last five years has been on so-called easy issues, uh, mainly in the economic and cultural area. Actually, it's not correct to say that nothing of a political sort has been done, because there are a couple of agreements that um, Beijing and Taipei reached uh, that really have to do with the work of governments. Uh, they are um, really political in character. And the one I'm thinking of is the one that concerns uh, cooperation between law enforcement agencies and uh, judicial, judicial agencies. Um, I think that, for the most part, uh, political issues are hard. And I would include uh, in this category security issues uh, such as a peace accord. And um, so my basic outlook, as you probably know, is that um, we shouldn't have terribly high expectations uh, going forward. And I have um, three or four reasons for thinking of that. Um, the first of these is the basis for talks. Uh, the basis for talks so far has been the 1992 consensus. Uh, and as we know, each side has defined it in their own particular way. And uh, President Ma has said, the one China that I'm talking about is the Republic of China. And Beijing has accommodated to those statements. My interpretation of the background of the 1992 consensus is, and uh, how each side thinks of it is that the 1992 consensus is probably not an acceptable basis for Beijing to um, pursue political talks. I, I think Taipei would find it perfectly acceptable because it uh, um, sort of defers certain issues that uh, uh, are very sensitive on Taiwan. Um, but um, my guess, and I really hope I'm wrong, uh, is that the two sides will have to come up with a different way, a more explicit way of talking about one China 
where Taiwan as a territory fits within China and where the ROC fits within the Chinese state. Um, and um, that's something that would have to be addressed at the outset. Um, the second reason I say that um, maybe political talks are premature is that there's actually a fair amount of work to be done um, on uh, the more easy agenda, that uh, there are still some agreements to be done under ECFA. Um, Taiwan seems to be having difficulties uh, ratifying domestically uh, uh, some of the you know, recent agreements that have been done. Um, we will all see what the legislative yuan does about the trade and services agreement. Uh, one of President Ma's um, goals of, uh, of his second term, creating uh, reciprocal offices, uh, seems to be um, stuck as well. I think the most important uh, thing that the two sides should do um, in um, President Ma's second term is implement well the agreements that they've already done. Uh, implementation is very important for uh, uh, creating confidence or mistrust about the intentions of the other. And if the two sides somehow implement badly the agreements that are already that have already been done, where uh, the feeling is they work to the mutual benefit of each side, uh, it's going to be harder for one or the other or both to um, address harder issues. Um, given the record of uh, how easy ones have been handled. Third, um, uh, third reason why political talks are, are probably um, not in the cards is that there's a conceptual gap. This is related to reason number one, but there's more depth to it. Um, this is essentially the issue of the Republic of China uh, and um, whether it exists uh, and uh, is it a sovereign entity. Um, people on Taiwan say yes. Uh, the PRC position um, has um, been no. Um, the um, um, uh, obviously for uh, the blue camp in Taiwan, uh, the Republic of China is an article of faith. For the green camp, um, they uh, are more skeptical, uh, but they're not. Uh, about to uh, reject it. Now, the good news here um, is that uh, some in China, scholars uh, in China, have um, begin, begun to write that um, maybe it's time for Beijing to address the issue of the Republic of China. Um, the bad news is that I'm not sure um, uh, it's clear how the two sides might uh, resolve this issue in a mutually acceptable way. And, and this has been one of the core um, issues of cross-strait relations since the early 1990s. Um, the fourth reason, I think, why political talks are difficult is domestic politics in Taiwan. Um, you know, even some of the easy issues, so-called easy issues, um, were controversial on Taiwan. Um, different groups in, had, in Taiwan had different assessments about whether uh, these agreements um, actually yielded Taiwan uh, true benefits or um, parochially whether uh, their particular sector uh, bened, benefited uh, from these agreements. And we know that the DPP uh, has charged that Ma ying um, in the course of doing these agreements, uh, to, um, undermined Taiwan's sovereignty uh, to um, create economic benefit for certain parts of the society. Um, obviously, um, a broad majority on Taiwan uh, favors the status quo. We understand that the status quo is changing. Uh, we understand that um, different people on Taiwan have different definitions of the status quo. Still, that's the default uh, position in public opinion. Polls also suggest that um, there is great anxiety in Taiwan about the future, uh, and uh, people are not so confident. Given that lack of confidence, uh, it's um, hard to see how 
they would accept with equanimity a movement to political talks. Um, indeed, uh, in the past couple of years, when there have been hints that maybe uh, political talks of some sort or another were um, uh, coming over the horizon, um, even if there was, th they really didn't signal that, um, there was something of a panic in Taiwan that uh, um, there was about to be uh, a major uh, change. Um, let me see what I have here. Um, I, I do think that uh, China has a much better understanding of uh, the Taiwan domestic environment than it did um, a number of years ago. And um, there seems to be uh, within the Chinese leadership uh, um, an, a willingness to be patient, um, within limits, obviously. Uh, I think that what we've seen in the uh, last few months is some signaling by both sides uh, to try and reassure the other that um, even if uh, political talks are difficult, uh, that the commitment to the excuse me the commitment to the process continues. But I await Bonnie's uh, analysis because it's probably sounder than mine. So these are the reasons why I think political talks are unlikely. The the basis for talks, uh, the need to do um, other kinds of work, uh, the conceptual obstacle of the Republic of China and Taiwan's political environment. Having said all that, um, there may be modest and concrete steps of a political character that the two sides could take for their mutual benefit and without raising fundamental conceptual issues uh, and without uh, creating a political firestorm in Taiwan. Um, uh, we understand that, at least informally, there's a kind of confidence building or uh, risk reduction regime that exists between the armed forces of the two uh, sides uh, in the Taiwan Strait. That could be formalized. That would contribute to Taiwan security uh, that uh, could be sold. Uh, prob I, I think. Um, I think there's also a real value for each side on its own uh, to think clearly and creatively about the issues that, that serve as obstacles to political talks. Um, it, it may be too early for the two sides uh, to talk themselves. Uh, they each have homework to do. Um, and in Taiwan, this uh, probably has to be done first in the blue camp and in the green camp separately, and then hopefully um, coming together. Also, on an optimistic note, I, I would say that what has happened during the last five years, even though in a formal sense it hasn't address, addressed political issues, uh, it has had a significant political impact. Uh, the situation between the two sides of the strait um, is much more positive uh, than it was six or seven years ago. Um, how each side uh, thinks about the other and uh, the future together is much different. It's not uh, a total change, uh, but it's not what we had um, um, six or seven years ago. And even the DPP is deliberating on how it might adjust its policies to take account of this um, new reality. Um, having made that rather positive point, um, let me conclude on two notes of caution, and then I'll come back to the triangle. Um, first of all, um, Beijing and Taipei have uh, chosen correctly, I think, to um, engage each other in an incremental process. And so easy first, then hard later, uh, things that are of mutual benefit first, and then uh, other things later. The problem with an incremental process is that each side will continue to have doubts about where the process is leading and what the ultimate outcome will be. So in this case, we understand China's goal is unification. Uh, but it fears that incrementalism is, may actually be just going around in circles. 
that you never meet the final goal and that actually the final goal will be permanent and peaceful separation of Taiwan. Um, and on the mainland side, we've seen uh, a few scholars who are worrying in print about the, um, the strengthening and consolidation of a Taiwan consciousness. And this concept is very general, um, of course. And uh, also worrying about the emergence of a blue-green consensus um, about what Taiwan is and about what the Republic of China is. And the concern is that this is going to make unification impossible. For Taiwan, the worry is uh, that this will bring ultimately um, a result that subordinates Taiwan within China, that um, is um, contradictory to Taiwan's sense of itself. For Taiwan, the fear is not going around in circles. The, the fear is going off a cliff. Um, Second concern I have is one that's come to me recently, and that has to do with the strength and coherence of Taiwan's political system. And I'm, I'm still thinking about this, so I just throw it out for your consideration. As you know, I've, I've written from time to time about weaknesses in the Taiwan political system, um, and um, I usually point to the legislature and the media, sorry to the reporters. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I think that those, could, uh, those two institutions could work better to uh, serve Taiwan's democracy and the people of Taiwan. Um, but at least since the early 1990s, the main actors in Taiwan have been political parties. They have aggregated interests in ways that are very important and define choices and limit choices. And, and try to focus on the most important thing. What we're seeing, I think, is the emergence outside of the political party structure of a lot of independent political action groups that um, have their own narrow agenda. They're willing to engage in fairly edgy um, political action of a public sort. And in this, the uh, mass media collaborates with them. Uh, and this puts pressure not on the political parties, but on, on uh, the administration, whether it's blue or green, uh, and just complicates the uh, task of um, sort of addressing the issues that I myself think are most important. So finally, uh, I mentioned the US uh, China Taiwan Triangle at the beginning. Uh, uh, I think that if um, uh, political talks don't go forward, uh, that does not mean that uh, the positive development in the, th the triangular relationship uh, need to be reversed. I think all three countries, uh, including China, can, can tolerate um, this slowdown. Um, and none of us knows what will happen in 2016. And uh, even there, I'm uh, not so pessimistic that it will um, lead to some kind of reversal and new disaster. Thank you very much for your attention.